review, 2024 Jeep Wrangler tows more, recovers better. The rock staircase climbed up from the sand, flanked by chaparral and sagebrush. As the red sandstone steepened into nearly a 30-degree pitch, the terrain appeared brittle, like the inside of a butterfinger. This was no candy bar. A 2024 Jeep Wrangler Willie skittered on a loose rock, the wheels pulled left, the guide shouted, and the driver arrested its slide. But it was stuck. Backing down would have been too tricky. Turn the wheel right up slope, and it would have rolled over, turn left and it had dived 20 feet into the sand, led by the new steel bumper and a factory-installed worn winch. Good thing for the guides and their recovery Rubicons. Better thing that Jeep fitted the available worn winch and its 8,000-pound capacity on all the test vehicles. In what took maybe five minutes, the team unspooled the power winch from the recovery rub icon, connected it to the tow hook on the driver's side of the stranded Jeep, yanked the nose, and pulled it into a course correction. It was so fluid it could have felt staged, if not for the mortification of the driver. With dozens of drivers, and skill levels ranging from expert to noobs, the $3,495 rub icon accessory proved its worth on more than one occasion. This area of deep sand, slick sandstone, and improbably cartoonish rock formations is popular terrain for wranglers, and serves as the proving grounds for much of Jeep's validations. Sand Hollow State Park in southwestern Utah could be a kind of mobilite, temptingly simple if you know where to go but deceptively challenging overall. It was just a place to test the redesigned 2024 Jeep Wrangler that has some simple updates that make a big difference. 2024 Jeep Wrangler, new 7-slot grille. Jeep hasn't strayed too far from what makes this icon of automotive icon so iconic. 10 wheel designs, 10 body color choices, 2-door and 4-door options, for different convertible rooftops only knock on the Pandora's box of Wrangler customization. The major change to the exterior is a shorter 7-slot grille with different color trim rings to signify the grades. It's stouter, but the grille bars have more texture that enables more engine cooling loss due to the shorter slots. All of this is in service of fitting the available worn winch, and in Rubicon X models, a steel bumper. Lurking behind that grille is one of four engine options, unchanged from last year except for the discontinuation of the turbo diesel. The base 285 horsepower 3.6 liter V6 comes with a six-speed manual with long throws and gappy gear spacing, but most buyers will opt for the $2,500 eight-speed automatic that feels more at home in the modern Wrangler. The 2.0-liter turbo, 4 is more potent. It makes 270 horsepower and 295 pound-foot, the latter of which peaks at 3,000 RPM, much sooner than the V6 and its 260 pound-foot at 4,800 RPM. It's a quieter, quicker, better daily driver, and worth the $2,500 upcharge over the V6 with the 8-speed. More Wrangler buyers are opting to pair that turbo, for, with a motor generator as well as a traction motor integrated into the 8-speed automatic in the 4XE plug-in hybrid model. Jeep said the Wrangler 4XE accounted for 38% of sales in the first quarter of 2023, and it's expecting that number to increase to 50% by next year. That's crucial for a brand experimenting with an electric Wrangler and struggling to meet cafe requirements. It's not just a numbers game. Fed by a 17.3 kilowatt hour battery pack, the 100 kilowatts traction motor partners with the turbo, for to generate 375 horsepower and 470 pound foot, not only is it more powerful than the turbo diesel, it's the best daily driver, quick and light off the line, quiet and smooth with its transitions. With 22 miles of all electric range, it's the model I'd recommend to many Wrangler fans who overlook its off-road ability in favor of its topless convertibility. It starts at a lower entry point this year in the $51,790 Sport S. The 2024 Wrangler costs about $700 more than last year's model, ranging from $33,690 for the base sport to $89,390 for the Rubicon 392. The 4XE offsets the first of the Wrangler Rubicon 392. 
Its 6.4 liter V8 makes 470 horsepower and 470 pound foot on its way to a 0 to 60 miles per hour of 4.5 seconds, though the top heavy beast feels more thrilling than that. Open up the exhaust baffles, and it sounds and moves like it'll conquer anything on road, off road, and in between. Jeep tweaks the steering hydraulics in the 392, so not only does the wheel feel heftier in the hands, there's also more feedback than in other models from the otherwise loose recirculating ball steering, especially compared to the 4XE. 2024 Jeep Wrangler, about that full float rear axle. The biggest mechanical difference for 2024 bolts into the rear, and it's also exclusive to Rubicon models. The Rubicon upgrades from a Dana 44 axle on other models to a Dana 44 HD full float rear axle often used in commercial trucking applications. Essentially, it allows increased towing capacity, more structural rigidity, and a simplified process of replacing a wheel or axle shaft if you find real trouble on the trail. The perfectly capable semi-float rear axle on other Wranglers both carries the load of the Jeep and handles the rotational force of the torque to the rear wheels. The design of the full-float axle splits those duties, so the axle tube bears the load, and the axle shaft transfers torque to the tires. It's unique in the way the wheel hub attaches to the axle, Pete Milosevlevsky, chief engineer for the Wrangler, explained. There's an extra bearing that allows us to attach the wheel hub directly to the axle tube. The extra stability allowed Jeep to increase the 2024 Wrangler Rubicon's towing capacity to 5,000 pounds, but only with the 2.0-litre turbo, 4 or the V6. Other models with the semi-float rear axle remain at a 3,500-pound capacity, while two-door models are rated at 2,000 pounds. We tested the V6 with the 8-speed hooked up to a 4,300-pound Estrem camper on a 96-degree desert day around Sand Hollow Reservoir. It was well balanced and with no trailer sack on the rear axle, the great silver turkey planted on its steel platter. The V6 strained uphill at 55 miles per hour, with the 8-speed automatic keeping the engine above 5,000 rpm. It wasn't for long, and it wasn't that unusual for such a weight and such an engine. I couldn't help but wonder how the discontinued turbo diesel and its 442 pound-foot of torque would perform or the 4XE or Rubicon 392. Jeep did not get SAE validation for the higher towing figure with those engines, due in part to the weight balance with a massive V8 up front, as well as the roughly 700 pounds of extra weight due to the 4XE powertrains. On milder ascents such as on-ramps, it kept much calmer in the 3000 to 4000 RPM range. In either case, the V6 didn't feel overmatched by the hefty load, it just required more patience. Milosevlevsky doubted an occasional Wrangler driver like me would notice the increased rigidity when driving and laden. Behind the wheel you're not really going to feel it unless you're trailering, he said. It gives you a sense of security and confidence because the structure is doing its job, and the axle shaft is focused on running the torque to the wheels. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.